Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport has us heading north of the border today, north of the border of the U.S., to the country of Canada. Calgary, Alberta, Canada is the home of our next guest. She is the fourth Olympian to maintain gold medal this year to win the gold in Rio de Janeiro. It's Erica Weeby. Erica, how are you? Hi, Scott. I'm good. How are you? Uh, well, obviously, <laughs> you owned 75 kilos this year, kid, and, and what a job you did making all of Canada proud. It was the fourth gold medal for the country, but more importantly, it was a statement to your 27 years on planet Earth. It was a neat thing. What did it feel like for you? Man, you know what? I woke up that morning and uh, and I just, I know I really felt unbeatable. Um, but for me, that feeling is just, you know, I just knew I could, I knew I, 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 knew I was going to have my best day. And I never thought about what the outcome was going to be. But I just, you know, I thought about every moment about just being present in the moment. And I remember being in the back and just like, just having this big smile on my face as I was preparing to warm up and getting ready to walk out for my first match. And and that's, you know, the best feeling in the world to have. Well, congratulations on that. Let's take everybody back a little bit. Tell us where you started in the sport. How old were you? Yes, yeah, so I started in grade nine. Um, I was 14 years old. I was always uh, a physical young girl, and I loved getting into sports, and I loved getting sweaty and just going after it. And uh, there was a co-ed wrestling team offered at my high school, and I thought that would be really fun to try. A co-ed wrestling team. Was that at Sacred Heart High? Yeah, at Sacred Heart High School in Stittsville, Ontario. It seems, you know, Canada has been tough in, uh, in women's freestyle for quite some time, and you're the most recent example of that. Uh, is wrestling across the country of Canada gaining in popularity because of uh, performances like you? I mean, I think, I would hope so. I mean, it's you know, I remember being young in the sport and, and having a lot of role models growing up, um, you know, Christine Nordhagen, Ohanoa Akufu, Tanya Rabik, and uh, the list continues. And, and, you know, having these women compete internationally and just be so tough. Uh, my first my first wrestling coach was Laura Jones, who was, a, you know, a 72-kilo wrestler just like me. And um, you know, I always had these really strong female role models in the sport, and so it was really easy for me to to get into it and to to love it right away. You think about the people you mentioned. Um, wrestling has come a long way over the last 10, well, should I say 20 and even the last 10 years. Uh, and on the international stage, women's wrestling just gets better and better and more popular. Um, that's going to give you some energy, doesn't it? It does. You know, I was actually um, able to watch the high school national championships. They were in Calgary this this um, spring, and you know, I was watching the young women competing at that event, and um, I was so, I was so inspired by you know their technique, their skills, their heart that they displayed on the mat, and it's so great to be you know part of the legacy. But i you know I can't wait for the day when young, one young up and comer steps on the mat and pushes me to be better. Talk to us about the club that you're wrestling uh, with, and uh, who's making it possible for you to continue to uh, live out your dreams. Yeah, so I train at the University of Calgary. I completed two degrees at the University of Calgary, and I was a dyno for five years. And now I'm just part of the club, and um, you know we have a great a great coaching team there. You know we have like an integrated support team. We have our varsity coach, Miss Mitch Osberg, my club coach, Paul Ragusa, who everyone might have seen was raised up on my shoulders after I won the gold medal because he has been so essential to my development, especially. Um, at the elite level. I mean, he, I think, is one of the best technical coaches in the world. And um, and so to be able to work with Paul and to have him kind of mentor me into the cold-blooded assassin that I've felt like on uh, August 18th, it's been incredible. <laughs> A cold-blooded cold assassin. assassin. <laughs> I like that. You're uh, the... the Let's see, Mayor Jim Watson uh, said that you will be a role model for a lot of other athletes, particularly young women. Do you embrace the idea of being a role model? I mean, I just try and be my best self every day. And, um, and I really encourage young girls to, to pursue that. And I think it's so easy to get caught up in, you know, expectations and, and distractions. And, um, but I think at the end of the day, 
um, for those women that, you know, get something inside of them through sport and through moving their bodies, I think the benefits of pursuing that passion at an elite level or at a recreational level, I mean, I think that that fulfillment that it gives you and that joy, um, I, yeah, I hope I could one day encourage young girls to, to, keep, to keep pursuing sport. Obviously, the gold medal at the Olympics is a high point for anybody's career, but at 27 years old, do we get the privilege of seeing you compete for another four years and and, uh, attempt another gold medal run? A hundred percent. I had more fun wrestling on on August 18th at the Games than I've ever had before. And uh, and wrestling's pretty fun when, well, wrestling's fun, but it's also, you know, you you like kind of, hate to love it or love to hate it. <laughs> it's not easy, but um, I love the grind of wrestling. And uh, and I stepped on the mats at the Olympic Games, and, and I was just so ready for, you know, the, all of the last nine years of work that I've been training and competing in Calgary to culminate in that one joyous moment. And I was not going to let any result dictate how I felt on that day. And um, I'm so excited to what the next four years of training are going to be. Talk to me about that special moment being on top of the box as your flag was revealed and the and the uh, national song for Canada was played. What was going through your mind at that point? Oh, such a whirlwind of emotions. You know, obviously a lot of people have asked me, like, how does it feel? And I just, I still can't describe, I can't describe what it was like. You know, you just, you work so hard for so long and, and I've always dreamed of being up on the podium and, and watching my Canadian flag being raised. But that feeling is just, it's a pure, pure joy. Is it hard not to be emotional? Well, I think you saw it. It is very hard not to be emotional. <laughs> <laughs> there I mean, t- I, I'm a, a very emotional guy. And uh, especially if I have a... a an attachment to somebody if I know somebody I I'm in it uh I cry at weddings for goodness sakes Mm -hmm. but um you know it's it's young girls like Athena Mitchell who at 18 years old absolutely looks up to you and I know uh Athena trains at the Renfrew uh amateur wrestling club she also competed in the junior Pan Am games she's the kind of girl that can follow in your footsteps some you know 10 11 years younger than you are now uh, she's, you know, the very future of Canadian wrestling. But, you know, this is this is a great opportunity for Canada um, to have such uh, a humble person as yourself. And that's one of the words that's being used to describe you by so many people. Where does that come from? Wrestling's a really humbling sport. Like, I'm going to go back to the training room in a couple weeks and I'm going to be wrestling uh, like high school kids, and and I'm going to be wrestling university athletes, and and they're going to score me, and they're going to beat me, and and it is a really humbling sport. And you don't get, you don't make it in wrestling by being too egotistical, by having to, by not putting yourself on the line every single day, and uh, and so I'm humble, but I'm also confident, and uh, and I'm also I just you know I I just I. I just want to be in there and I just want to compete. And, um, and you know, through putting it on the line every single day, um, it comes with a lot of failures. And I've failed so many times. And so I think, you know, this is just one next step in my journey. And, and I'm so excited to keep wrestling. And, and uh, I know I'm going to fail and I'm going to lose. And, and it's all just part of the journey. There's a lot of things that go into an Olympic journey. Um, and sadly, part of it is a financial strain it puts on the athlete, the family, uh, getting to and from preparatory competitions, training, uh, all of that that goes into it. How do you handle it? Um, I think, you know, it, it comes with sacrifices. And um, and I, I made a decision, and I, and I choose to do what I love, um, and that's wrestling. And it's not about the glory um, or about, you know, the – the great financial rewards. Um, 
And I remember a couple years ago, and I was waiting for some funding to come in, and I had competed for Canada at the Junior World Championships, and I needed to pay rent in September, and I had to borrow a thousand dollars from my sister to uh, to get me through that month before you know my student loans came in or or something like that. And uh, but you know when you do what you love, it's 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 not it doesn't feel like a sacrifice. So what happens after the gold medal? The you stay in in, uh, in Rio, enjoy the weather a little bit, I would imagine. But mm-hmm. there's other duties that you must uh, ac- accomplish for uh, that go along with the Olympic gold medal. What are some of the things that you um, that the uh, Olympic Committee had you do post match? Oh yeah, well, um, so. I think, well, most athletes get drug tested right after they can win. (laughs) (laughs) So I got um, drug tested. And there's actually a great video on CBC if you search CBC Sports. And there's kind of a great little three-minute montage of what the day after the Olympics looks like. And so, um, or what the night after the Olympics looked like. So, you know, I I competed at around 8 o'clock. I finished around 8 o'clock in Rio time, got my medal. And then I got whisked away to doping right away. And I sat in doping for about 45 minutes before I had to go pee. <laughs> and somebody watched me pee, and then um, they took my sample, and I got to go on my way. And then I got whisked to um, the International Broadcast Center at around 9 o'clock. And luckily, my best friend and teammate, Jasmine Meehan, came with me. And so uh, we got a bite to eat there. And then, you know, it was like back-to-back interviews for about, you know, two, three hours. And uh, they finally took me back to the village around 2.30 that night. Wow, 2.30 in the morning, actually, right? Yeah. That's amazing. So that's a, that is a long day. And I, I got to believe that there's an emotional high that's keeping you going, but uh, it's still a long day. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I was like, I was up at 4.30 that morning um, just because I couldn't sleep because I was, I was just so, you know, so on a high, I read again, ready for my competition. So yeah, it's a long day. It's a very long day. So you, you are then uh, planning your trip home. When do you go and when do you arrive? You arrived at the Ottawa International Airport on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And hundreds of people were there to greet you. And the flags were flying and the cameras were out. It was an emotional time for so many. Your family, the, the, the local press, of course. Um, can you describe what it was like uh, coming out to that type of a homecoming? Yeah, I, mean, I didn't expect uh, so many people to come in. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I felt so much support from my community in the lead up to Rio and, uh, and of course, afterwards. And, and you know, I, really, I, made, I actually changed my flight to fly back to Ottawa because um, I knew that there's like a strong, I knew I had such a strong tie with my wrestling community there and with you know the friends and family that had been with me since day one and so I, I decided to change my flight and fly back to my hometown and um and, and you know kind of just share with them this moment so when you get there one of the things you wanted to do right away was <laughs> you wanted to go visit the local pub did you get it done <laughs> uh no. <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> so you didn't go to the Riverstone pub? Oh, okay. So the Riverstone pub is actually in Calgary. All right. So okay, I understand now why you <laughs> When when will you be going there? Well, so I flew back to Calgary about a week later. Okay. And um or actually on the Friday. And so my good friends at the Riverstone Pub in Calgary had organized a party with all the wrestlers. And uh, and so I literally landed and then drove right there. Are you more famous than Justin Bieber? Bieber? No. no. <laughs> Definitely not. I mean it's it's again even you know it's it's humbling being an you know being an Olympic champion because I had this one woman, I flew to Vancouver last week, and this woman like chased me down to the airport. She was like, oh, my God, are you Erica Weeb? And I was like, oh, uh, yes. And then we had a really great chat. And then, but for most of the time, I'm just another person, you know, and, and I actually, and then I was coming home from Vancouver last night, and I was going through security, and of course, I t- carried on my medal, and, you know, they have to always look at it through security, 
because I guess it's just like a nondescript metal object. They're like, what is this? And, you know, then everyone's like, oh, like, what is that? Like, is that a gold medal? Like, and they have no idea. <laughs> and so it's humbling because for most of the time I'm just walking around and, and just obscurity and, and no one knows. No one, no one really um, cares. <laughs> All right. So the, we've been saying your name in the U.S. as we be. It's actually just we, right? Yeah. Okay. But you are also known as a beweeber. Uh, Who gave you that nickname? I have a hashtag (laughs) beweeb. Yeah. And uh, it was actually like a super fan in Canada, like the guy behind 49 North Wrestling. He, I guess he was one of the first beweebers because when I went to my first senior world championship, he was like, I (laughs) beweeb. So I think, uh, you know, I think. A lot of people believed in me before I really believed in myself. And um, that was, that was you know, one of the keys to kind of gain the confidence that I had to, to wrestle my best. Who is Karen? Karen Galan is kind of my pseudo mom. <laughs> and so uh, she's the mom of one of my best friends here in Calgary. And, um, you know, she, my appendix ruptured a couple of um, years ago and, and she nursed me back to health and she's just been such a strong kind of figure in my life. There've been so many people that have been in your life and so many of them are so supportive. Who would you like to, uh, and, and I know that you'll probably leave somebody out quite by accident, but if I gave you the opportunity to extend out some gratitude, who would you, who would you recognize? Oh, man. Um, you know, all my teammates at the University of Calgary who have pushed me and challenged me to be better, um, you know, my first coaches in Ottawa, Mike Smith, Mike Lidstone, um, Kevin Stem, some of the guys who were there on like a Tuesday morning when I was in grade 10 and they were just, they were there for me and one other teammate and, you know, that's just the love of wrestling. That's the passion and the family that we have. Um you know, all the people at the Canadian Sport Institute in Calgary, they have been with me since day one. And my friends and my partner, um, you know, Christiana, Taylor, Andrea, um, and my partner, James. You know, it's like really takes a village. And this process of wrestling is, is not an easy one. <laughs> and so. I like that. It does take a village, doesn't it? Yeah. So tell me this. Um, when do you get to meet Prime Minister Trudeau? <laughs> well, he did call me. He so did. I, yeah. So I did chat with him. He, I, he called. Or I, the phone rang, and I, knew, I had, I had it scheduled. So I knew he was going to call me. So I could just, I was just waiting there, and then the phone rang, and it was like a, a, you know, his assistant, or she's like, "Hello, this is the Prime Minister's office. Like, are you ready to talk to the Prime Minister?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> and then. She's like, okay, ready. And so then she switches the line over, and he picks up, and he's like, hi, Erica, it's Justin. Justin. He calls himself Justin. Yeah, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Justin so Trudeau pretty- just says, hey, it's Justin. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> well, what, I mean, that had to have been a little surreal. Yeah, it was uh, – it was, it's just been such a surreal time, you know, like I'm still the same person um, that I was three weeks ago, but, um, you know, that I've been for the last nine years, you know, I've, I've, I have all these really strong values and, um, and, you know, I've, I've really committed to, and really found out who I am as a person, but, but now it's like, I have this gold medal. And so people look at me differently and, um, it's really interesting What's, I got to ask you, was there caller ID on uh, the prime minister's phone so you have his number now? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> it guarded secret. Erica, yeah. I can't congratulate you enough. We're so proud of you on behalf of the sport of wrestling. We have some wonderful ambassadors. You are one of them. And uh, I, I'm just so grateful you're a part of the sport. Your performance in Rio was outstanding. But the road to there... Perhaps that's the even better story. But, man, it ended up uh, nice and bright for you with a beautiful gold medal. Congratulations. Thank you, Scott. It's been great. For all of us to take down our very special Nike Hot Seat guest has been Erica Weeb, And uh, she is, of course, the Canadian gold medalist that lit up the world with her smile. We appreciate the opportunity we've had today to share her with you. 